All right. Uh, welcome back. Delighted to say uh, Lee Bullen with us for the second half, which lasts longer than the first half. It's about 20, 25 minutes. Carvel Hall, is that, uh, is that OK? Better. You're better, better, still not You're there. better, almost there. Carlos Carvel Hall. Carva Hall. Carvel. I love the combination of sort of Portuguese and Scotch. It's great. I love it. It's a great accent. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's about to say Yorkshire. I'm, I'm halfway. But I'm somewhere in the middle. Having been born in Kent and lived most of my life in Yorkshire, I think I'm pushing up towards Nottingham now. I think. So, so somewhere around there. James Gregg, uh, Sheffielder, native of Sheffield. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Born and bred. Yep. Yeah. Born and Drink bred. Drink Henderson's neat. And he <laughs> balances out slightly. Slightly. Uh, it's an all-owl show. Uh, I won't apologise because last week's was nearly all a Blade show and there'll be some Blade shows coming up. For instance, Nick Cox is coming back. Jamie Hoyland will be here for one of those. People have already booked. So, you know, we, we, that's the party political over. We do balance things out. Uh, James, it's more than just football. There's loads going on. It is for sports to touch on today. We've got football, hockey basketball and golf all to talk about uh, for the next five minutes or so. We'll start with football. Five star showing for the Blades on Tuesday night in the Johnston Paints Trophy beat Notts County 5-1. Good confidence boost ahead of Saturday's fixture when they welcome Rochdale to Bramall Lane. Of course, a week off for Sheffield Wednesday with the international break. Their next game is against Hull a week on Saturday. It's non-league day as well, talking football. We're Hallam second in the league after a 5-1 win last last night and uh, they welcome Hemsworth to Sandygate on Saturday. Sheffield FC, they welcome Loughborough Dynamo. So we're spoiled in this area yes. and you wrote about this in your column, didn't you? I did and I, I think people should, uh, let, let's bring Lee on, on on this and by the yeah. way, uh, Ryan would want us to say that Hallam went a goal down and still won 5-1 and it was his first anniversary as manager at, uh, Absolutely. at Hallam. Yeah, yeah non-league non football day. Uh, there's a there's a lot, lot of good stuff. I, I've I've seen Sheffield and Hallam quite quite recently. There's a lot of good football players. That's there. fantastic. I've just heard um, I think it was the chairman of Hallam on the radio on the way in to meet you guys, and he mentioned that uh, season ticket holders at, at the lane or at Hillsborough will get in for free up at Hallam on Saturday if they show their season ticket. So it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Why not go along support your local teams? And I think Ryan's done a magnificent job since he's gone in there. It strikes me, you know, and you may not wish to sort of get involved in this, but. When I see a game at that level, it's far more competitive and I think meaningful <laughs> than probably academy games yeah. are. Yeah. And that's a problem in the whole of football at the moment. The, the void, not having that tough yeah. reserve team environment, is that a problem? I think 100% of football coaches would agree with you in the professional game, bring back, bring back reserve football because I think at under 21 level it's a bit like cotton wool football a little bit. You need to get that kick from that 36-year-old senior pro. <laughs> Welcome to football type of thing, and maybe going out to places uh, in the non-league would certainly toughen up some of these kids. Mm. Okay, we we'll might return to that, James. Sorry to interrupt. We'll no, go. Good, good we'll subject to talk about, yeah. and um, you know, Sandy Gate and at the Coach and Horses Ground in Dronfield uh, were spoilt in this area with non-league teams. So please get yourselves down there and support those. As we said, very competitive football indeed. It's the biggest game in English ice hockey on Saturday. The Sheffield Steelers, that of course the Elite League champions last season, welcome the rivals Nottingham Panthers to the the arena. You seven can say that again. Rivals is uh, hated enemies. It's probably more than more yeah. so than Sheffield United versus Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. and, and it actually is. Um, some of the battles that you see in, in that fixture over the years, fantastic stuff. Paul Thompson, Dave Sims, friends of yeah. this show, <laughs> talked about that. Um, they love it, don't they? They love talking about it. They certainly do. And Simsy wrote a brilliantly entertaining column in the Sheffield Telegraph this week about what that fixture means. And in his words, how Paul Thompson, the new coach, gets it. He, he bought into the, this kind of feeling. Because Dave Sims here, I said, what is it with you two, Sheffield? And I, he said, it's quite simple, really. We hate each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He meant it, didn't he? He did. He did mean it. Yeah, there was yeah. No, certainly no love lost. But like, well, Rangers and Celtic. That is hate. Yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, but I'm sure there's not the same religious connotations with regards to Sheffield. Oh, absolutely. Know, which is good. Which absolutely. is a positive thing. <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, that's it. That's there. 7 o'clock, the Sheffield Arena on Saturday. Thoroughly entertaining Saturday night entertainment if you want to go down there. Perhaps from a non-league football game. That would be an 
nice Saturday mm. of sport, wouldn't it? Uh, basketball, the Sheffield Sharks season is underway. It started with two defeats, um, but they've not got another league game for three weeks now. But in the meantime, they'll be playing Manchester Giants in the British Basketball League Cup before they get back into the league action. And we'll finish things off with golf. It's the British Masters at Woburn this week. Two Sheffielders in action. Danny Willett has shot two under par in his opening round. And Matthew Fitzpatrick is the standalone leader after a magnificent round of 64 for seven under par. Let's hope he can break through with his maiden European Tour victory this weekend. That's all, Alan. That's all, is it? That's okay, everything. James. Yeah. Ca carry on with this, and you know, you, we, we, you may have a uh, your ten pennies to, to chip in over here. What are you going to do this weekend, then, Lee? Uh, it's non-league day, and you haven't got a game. Lower league games. Where are you going to go? You put me under pressure now. Now. <laughs> when you're away every weekend to play football and you've got a good lady at home that's yeah. dealing with one-year-old twins, quite often, in fact, that's 100% right, she'll pick up two babies, hand them to me and walk out the door and get a few hours to herself. So where I could end up, I really don't know. I might end up at Hallam with two babies on my own. <laughs> Why not? Because you, it would be more difficult to take them to a, a, a league game, wouldn't it? And, you absolutely. Know, so absolutely. You, you could have them in the you got the double buggy, have you? <laughs> absolutely, and, uh, double buggy yeah. up and everything. So like watch out for the bull and double buggy at uh, Sandygate Road, Why possibly. Not? Start them young, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but it's quite an honest answer because football is so intensive, yeah. so full on. Mm. You have to take a break somewhere. You do, and and people forget the other side of it. Like, listen, it's a fantastic job. Nobody's going to knock that, whether you're a player or a coach or anything like that. But. Your, your close family do suffer sometimes. The amount of time you spend away or the hours you spend in the in the office and then going to watch games in the evenings or travelling away overnight to games and it's relentless. It's Saturday, Tuesday, we've touched on it already, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday type of thing. So um, when you get the opportunity to give your better half a, a little bit of a break, a couple yeah. hours here and there sometimes, yeah, it's forced on you. So well, and, and and so you should. And Carlos has gone back to his family Absolutely. in Portugal yeah. for the weekend. It's my oldest daughter's birthday this weekend. Uh, I, I haven't got a game to go to to work, so I can earn some brownie points by saying, "Well, actually, no, I'm not going to work this weekend. I'll spend the weekend with you." So, I'll take credit so we, for that we, idea. Yeah, I'll you do. You, you, you <laughs> said that's the way I should play it. That's the way I should play. It. Yeah. I can quite safely say because Mrs. Biggs has got far better taste. She does not watch this program. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's, let's return to Sheffield Wednesday and, uh, uh, and the start that you've made. Uh, you've raised expectations now. Uh, there's a level of performance that's expected. Mm. Um, are the players really aware of that? Is that a message that you've had to strike home? Or? I think when the new chairman came in and there was mention of the, the money, then expectations rose. Then there was a quiet summer period at, at one point, so expectations were diluted. And then suddenly 14, 15 signings were made and the expectations go through the roof again. Then you get up and down performances, so it's diluted. And now four, four in the bounds, suddenly we're, we're, uh, we're going for it again. So, so, but it's great, it's great. It's, it's very exciting. Those signings came in a rush after there have been loads of criticism, what's going on, nothing's yeah. going on, all yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And we've been assured that plenty was going on. There was the, did you expect 15? No. No, definitely didn't. And not to the quality of player that's been brought in. But I, didn't, I didn't know the individual foreign players until... Um, until the names came out, um, but obviously to get people like on top of your 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 lads that were here last year, like Forestieri and McGoog and in the door, your Bannons, your Wallaces, and uh, th these are guys with proper experience. Some of these guys have been promoted out of the Championship into the Premier League, and that's the experience that that I think we needed. And Daniel Pudil uh, is an there. excellent left back. Fabulous, coming. fabulous. Even Royce Wiggins is coming again. It also signed as a left back, but he was in the football league of the, uh, team of the year a couple of seasons ago with Charlton. So um, we're recruiting really well on top of the lads that have been yeah. part of the squad for, for the last couple of seasons. And the, what, the only nickel that people in the media like me have, have, have raised is of all the signings, there's not been a striker. You know, the, the one that's been most most talked mm -hmm. about, and yet you're scoring goals. Yeah. No, we are scoring. There's only one game this season. We've not we've been held to a clean sheet, and that was Bolton away, and we should have scored three or four in the first half. Typically, we're holding on at the end, as the mm -hmm. typical Sheffield Wednesday way. But yeah, people will say that's the final piece in the jigsaw that we need to get. But there's no point bringing somebody in for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think it's important that we get the right one in that's going to add to the squad, not just for the sake of bringing a striker in. Mm. And in the meantime, Atty knew who is manfully... Uh... As I say, there's a relationship building there with Atty and, um, and Fernando, with Lucas uh, playing a big, big part.
whether he's starting or coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I think Sergi Bush did, did well when he came on against Newcastle yeah. as well. And in the background, you've still got Lavery and people like that. Yeah, and Fernando Forestieri is clearly a quality <laughs> player, but needing to build up his match fitness because yeah. he didn't yeah. quite look sharp in that last game. Um, yeah, I mean, he'd been out for a game because he had tweaked his hamstring two games mm. prior to that, and he looked as if he was still uh, short of match pace. I think he improved as the game went on, don't get me wrong, but I think mm. in the first half he was very subdued and not the bright uh, the bright player that we've seen in the first few mm. games. I thought he was outstanding against Burnley in the away game when we lost 3-1. It's probably the best performance we've had and we come away getting beat 3-1. But Still mm. produced that piece of quality that unlocked the game though, didn't he? Last yeah. weekend. No, fantastic little flip round the corner for Kieran Lee to go mm. and put it in. And that's what he's capable of. Um, but again... McGugan's like that as well. He can have a quiet game at one point and then suddenly pick out a wonder pass or chip the goalkeeper from the halfway line. He's, yeah. We've got players like that um, that can they can really be game changers. Yeah, so if the performance dips a little bit, it's not quite at the level mm. you want. You've still yeah. got match winning. We've got, some, some, we've got a player that can do something to really lift it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tom Lees, mm. uh, very consistent. Mm -hmm. um, he's played a lot of games, actually, for his age, 24. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems that he's really lifted his game since since yeah. leaving Leeds. Uh, you know, I, on Twitter, I have people saying good ri Leeds fans yeah. are following. He's saying yeah, good got riddance when. I got the same. Sometimes uh, a team's a fit. Listen, Tom was fantastic initially, and this young kid coming through at Leeds and played really well. But ultimately, if things aren't going right, every every club seems to have a scapegoat of some sort. And unfortunately, it seemed to be Tom in his in his latter spell at Leeds. He's come in, clean slate with us really settled and started well, and that's important at any new football club, started well, and now he's almost one of the first names on the team sheet for the coach, you would think. And credit to the lad as well, because he could have quite easily jumped ship and headed for more money to Fulham when they were biting around his ankles earlier in the season, and credit to the coach and, and, and the chairman for knocking that back as well. That was a big statement. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you know, when, when transfer rumours like that break into the press, mm -hmm. and uh, you see a rejected bid, and you, you, you always, my suspicion is always that the club that the player is playing for is privately hawking him around, mm. when I see that mm. come out. Mm. And, and I did wonder at the time, I thought, is that a starter for 10? But no. Don't they, get me they wrong, though. They said, didn't they? It's setting out uh, sort of good messages, because when other clubs are interested in your players, you must be doing something, right? Now, Westwood was tipped to go here, there and everywhere for three yeah. to five million at one point. They were talking Liverpool, Everton, Sunderland. Not Sunderland, he came from Sunderland. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, Tom Lees flipped about. The next one will be Joe Wildsmith. Yes. Do you know... That brings me on to one of the points that was going to be raised. How good is he? Nah, he's different class. He's got a big chance. The biggest, the biggest problem Joe's got is he's got Kieran Westwood in the squad with him. That's, I mean, yeah. in, in my opinion, Kieran's the best goalkeeper in the league, and he proved that last year, and it was rightly so. Joe, I think, has learned so much in training. Andy Rhodes has been fantastic with him. Um, Obviously, we brought Lewis Price in as good uh, experience cover initially in number two. Um, but slowly but surely, Joe's certainly come out of shell as a youngster, really proved his worth. Um, magnificent in the games he's played for the first team and was magnificent for England yesterday in the under-20s under against Holland. Was he? He had a really good game, did he? Can, yeah. I, can I ask you, you know, there's lots of good goalkeepers. Mm. Sheffield Wednesday have always had, mm. you know, seemed to have had good goalkeepers from looking outside in. Cameron Dawson, he's obviously a squad member at yep. Wednesday. He must be so far down the pecking order, and he's no, he's, no. he's capped at junior level as well, he's, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he was under twenty one, under twenty level last year, where Joe was at under nineteen level. Um, Cammy's not down the pecking order. All it takes is one or two injuries. Yeah. He's, he's, he's back up. He's, he, at the moment, he's fourth choice, but he again has taken his from the beginning of this season compared to the back end of last season. He's taken his overall performances within training and his whole levels up another notch as well. I think. Those four goalkeepers are pushing each other. I mean, Stuart Gray went on about it last year that having Kirkland there really pushed Westwood to really big heights. I think working with Westwood, obviously they've got a fantastic goalkeeping coach there, then they're pushing each other, these four goalkeepers, and they're really, really blessed to have two young goalkeepers like that, that sort of 19, 20 year old sort of age group, to yeah. push your Lewis Price and to push uh, your Kieran Westwood. Because now Carlos has no problems, should Kieran maybe take an injury, a suspension, get sent off, whatever, he's got no problems yeah. looking to Lewis Price, one, or either of the two young goalkeepers. He really has that much confidence. I suppose you never know until they're, they're actually yeah. in. And yeah. he's had the opportunity yeah. and he's shown he's got the temperament as well. Absolutely. Talent, yeah. Absolutely. But it, it is uh, on an eye face because. You see a lot of Sheffield United. Yeah. Uh, George Long, mm. you know, came in with this great mm. reputation. Clearly, a lot of raw ability. Mm -hmm. 
and mm. for whatever reason, it, it's kind of gone and gone a wrong for him, isn't it? Yeah. It's, from, I mean, from watching from watching him, Mark Howard came in and had a good run. Um, he had six clean sheets, I think, yeah. and that's uh, that's what kept George out the yeah. side. George then came back in. Um, and I think it was for a cup game, a league cup game, something like that. Made a couple of mistakes. Confidence gets down a bit. He's still a good goalkeeper. He's not got any worse. Mm -hmm. He had a great loan spell at Motherwell. Yep. Um, I think that's done him a world of good. And on Tuesday night, he didn't look. He, he was obviously nervous. He wanted to. He was desperate to try and prove himself. Yes. He came out a couple of times. It didn't cost anything. He didn't. No. He didn't, didn't concede a soft goal or anything like that. He'd have needed He'll that, wouldn't he? Yeah, de definitely. He started with that four 0 at Colchester, which wasn't his fault, really. No, absolutely the whole not. Played badly yeah. there, you know. No, I think um, knowing a lot of people, obviously over the border up the road, um, <laughs> they they. They were raving about him up in Scotland. They thought they thought he had a fantastic spell. Mm. Like you touched on it, Motherwell, and mm. he came back down. Um, and I think it was a straight fight between the two of them to see who was going to get the jersey initially. And George mm. got it. Okay, yeah, results went against him. But that's the nature of the beast. Unfortunately, as a goalkeeper, you make a mistake. You're 99 times out of 100, you're going to get punished. The ball's yeah. going to end up in the back of the net. If you're a striker, you make a mistake then. Uh, you can slowly get away with it a little bit more. It's devastating for confidence, for especially as a young, a younger goalkeeper as yeah. well. I think as, as well, a lot of fans they they see a, a goalkeeper mistake, which might not have just been a goalkeeper mistake. It might have come from it a defensive error. Three errors before, but, yeah, that, before yeah, exactly, that, that's yeah. caused it to get exactly. to that point. Yeah. And a lot of fans fail to see that. And sometimes, yeah. you know, fickle fans in mm. Sheffield can't yeah. get on top of a, a goalkeeper no, like that, absolutely. like George. Yeah. How much do you have to do with goalkeepers? Because Although it's not your specialist position, you have played in goal, <laughs> yeah. as we all know, and certainly that book will uh, no ball, which yeah. is he's not talking any ball tonight either. You've played in goal, you've played in every position mm -hmm. on the field, so that must help you as a as, as a coach. How involved <laughs> do you get with every position? Um, no, I don't. I've got nothing to do with the goalkeepers in any way. That's mm. Andy Rhodes' bag, and, and he'll make those decisions on that. Um, I love my spell playing here, there, and everywhere. But it was a master of all trades, Jack and or Jack of all trades, master yeah. of none. Sorry. Um, <laughs> It's, it's one of these that I'll do a little bits and pieces after training with one or two of the defenders and things like that, whether it's just basic head. And sometimes yeah. the basics is the hardest thing to keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's all these high fluting different drills and coaching sessions and small sided games and tactical yeah. ways. But sometimes just being able to head it and kick it properly is, is the right thing to do as a defender. Yeah. Um, now we're lucky enough to have a, a different quality defender now who can actually take a ball and control it and actually make a fun, wonderful pass instead of yeah. booting it into Rosetta, like I used to do. So <laughs> <laughs> you you underplay yourself. <laughs> uh, we talked about the strengths of Sheffield Wednesday with this big squad now, the great ability. Yep. Is there anything in particular, not so much a weakness, but anything <clears throat> that you really think as a group that you can work on as a team that you really need to work? No, on? I think it all comes down to results, and it's just slowly but surely building a belief amongst the squad that we can challenge your, you. Touch the middles of us and your burn laser. Yeah. Next two games, Hull and QPR, yeah. they're going to be real pointers to us. I don't think we should have any fear against any, any of these teams because I think we've proved it. I touched on it. Our best performance of the season was against Burnley. We should have been out of sight. We end up losing the game 3 1. And that's yeah. where um, experience in this league comes in. And they had that and they proved that. Uh, so they punished us when they got their opportunities. Now it'll be the same if we're not on our game against Hull and QPR because they've got experienced boys who've been there, seen it, done it. Um, but I'm so looking forward to these next two games. It'll be fantastic. Forget the Arsenal game in between. That's just a, a, a great occasion for the supporters and the players to get involved in. But these two games are, are, are great for, for a coach to really see what level are we at now after yeah. the confidence of those three league victories. It strikes me the standard is just lift going mm -hmm. through the roof in the championship. It has. It has. Absolutely. Now, I think... And I think the United fans are giving their team a hard time at the moment because I think League One is possibly the poorest it's been in a long, long time. Right. Because last, I don't think there's a Bristol City, I don't think there's an MK Dons, I don't think there's a Preston in that league this year. Um, they've all joined us on top of the three teams coming down the way and then you look at some of the teams that are in the league. It's a fabulous league, the Championship, to be involved in. But it's all down to consistency and confidence with regards to the way we're going. But the, I think the Championship's almost the, the toughest it's been in a long, long time. Add on top of that next year, the mega box join into the yeah. parachute payments from the Premier League. Yeah. It's just only going to get tougher. Look at what clubs are paying for players. Burnley, £9 million. Pounds. Bristol yeah. City, or, they've just come out. Yeah. League One, they offered £9 million for yeah. Andre Gray. Ends up going £9 million to Burnley. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, reportedly, Middlesbrough had offered £15 million for Jordan Rose. That doesn't happen in the Championship. No. Come on. Yeah. But I still Blackburn knocked it back, though. I think he did, because I had sources at Middlesbrough at the time that was happening. They, they said that the Blackburn kept... Moving the goalposts. That, that wasn't a case Bits of five million in. now, five million. That, I think no. that was almost whacked all yeah. down, and it's just like, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's a big decision to knock that back. It is. Yeah. And Sheffield Wednesday, is, well, you won't know, but we don't know the exact figures, but something around £10 million, I think, has been spent in fees on players. Looking around, it's a time of change uh, in management. We saw Steve Evans mm -hmm. go from Rotherham. Um, we don't know, but Dean Smith, is uh, he's doing very well at Walsall, isn't he? And, and next Wednesday, man, yeah, he's yeah. done fantastic. I think they're lying, are they lying second in the league at the moment. And yeah. you wouldn't have tipped Walsall to be up there, but it just proves... Get a little bit of consistency, somebody who knows the league inside out and knows the players, you can put something together. And, and he's done that, he's slowly but surely stepped up. I yeah. mean, Rob Page is doing a great job at Port Vale, another local lad with, from the red and white half as well. But um, these guys, they're building reputations for themselves. Yeah, Neil, Neil Redfern is favoured or fancied by the bookies for, for Rotherham. Yep. It's logical. You must admire the great work you've ah, right. worked in an academy. Cross swords with them, obviously, at under-21s yeah. um, when, when we played Leeds up there. Yeah. And then, obviously, he got his break at, up at Leeds. And, again, was he harshly uh, disposed of at Leeds? I think yeah. the majority of people would say yes. Yeah. So I fully deserves his opportunity because I thought he did a great job at Leeds. He steadied the ship there, really got them consistent. and um, Just waiting and, for a management job, really. And it looks yeah. like he'll get one of the two, Doncaster or... Uh, well, oh, Lee Clark, actually, is the bookie's favourite. Yeah. I've got my doubts about it. For Rotherham or Doncaster? For Doncaster. Right. I've got my doubts after his previous two jobs. But Absolutely. Darren Ferguson. I think the thing is... Darren with... Ferguson, better bet, you know. Mm -hmm. that I, th I think the thing is with Neil as well, he's, he's got his assistant, Tomo, and he's he's a, he's a great assistant, Steve Thompson. Yeah. He was... He was influential when, because I know Cellino, there was some problems with the contract mm -hmm. or there was something where he wasn't allowed mm -hmm. to assist Neil at first. Mm -hmm. He then came in and they had a great run. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they sacked Steve, they stomp, started to drop off again. I think that he's actually a very important assistant to uh, But to Steve Neil. is now at Preston mm -hmm. at the moment. So whether or not he'd just leave there, I don't know if he'd be an understanding if Neil got a job and yeah. move on, I don't know. I don't He'll know. have a good job at Preston. I think uh, for, Preston's a fabulous football club. It's but, food for yeah. thought anyway, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah. but I, I, I'm thinking he might be locked into that, mm -hmm. but it is, a, it, is a, it is a good shout. Mm -hmm. um, and also Stephen Presley, yeah. who you, you work with up in Scotland there at uh, Falkirk, he's back in at Fleetwood. That's a great job for him, isn't it? My big mate's back yeah. involved. I think, I think again, well, did he deserve to go at Coventry? Because I thought he'd, he'd no. I mean, he was a firefighter there when he went and did a fabulous job initially with a, what was that, minus 12 points deduction. Playing at Northampton. Great. Playing at Northampton, yeah. yeah, trying to be the pacifier between fans and board. And, um, I think it's brilliant. He's got, I think he's he's been very close to getting another couple of jobs that were up and about the back end of last season. Mm -hmm. um, but the Fleetwood one's a great one. And listen, he's got a wealthy backer. Whether or not they're trying to pull the push strings in a little bit, Graham Alexander obviously um, had initial funds of cash and they got promotion were very successful. I don't know if they're trying to tighten the belt a little bit, go for a little bit more youth. And, and that, that's right up Stephen Street because we did that at Falkirk as well. We had 15, mm -hmm. 16 year olds in the team and a lot of success from it. And um, just delighted to see the big man back involved. He was Excellent. screaming up and down that line. Yeah, and yeah. Geez. He's quite a character. Thanks, chaps. That's brilliant. Uh, next week, uh, by the way, it reminds me, Brian Laws, who I spoke to earlier yeah. today, sends his regards. Fantastic. Sends his regards to you. Brian will be here, all being well, uh, next week as one of our guests. Uh, we also have the, the manager of Sheffield FC's ladies team. Now, they are doing great things. They're in the Super League structure. I think they're in the second division second of the women's... Tier, yes. Second tier of the women's wow. Super League. So it's a chance to find out more about that. Uh, we possibly also have an ice hockey guest as well. So it's going to be a, a very, very busy studio next week. Thank you to you for your company. Always much appreciated. If you've just come in and you've missed this show, uh, you've missed a treat, including how to pronounce the, head, the name of the head coach of Sheffield Wednesday. It's repeated at 11pm tonight. It will also go on Vimeo in the next couple of days. See you next week. Bye. Uh, your ten pennies to, to chip in over here. What are you going to do this weekend then, Lee? Uh, it's non-league day. And you haven't got a game, lower league games. Where are you going to go? You put me under pressure. Now, now <laughs> when you're away every weekend to play football and you've got a good lady at home that's yeah. dealing with one-year-old twins, quite often, in fact, that's 100% right, she'll pick up two babies, hand them to me and walk out the door and get a few hours to herself. So where I could end up, I really don't know. I might end up at Hallam with two babies on my own. <laughs> Why not? Because it would be more difficult to take them to a, a, a league game, wouldn't it? And 
Absolutely. You know, so Absolutely. You, you could have them in the, you got the double buggy, have you? <laughs> Absolutely, and, uh, double buggy yeah. up and everything. So like watch that. out for the bull and double buggy at uh, Sandygate Road, Why possibly. Not? Start them young, yeah. 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 But, but it's quite an honest answer because football is so intensive, yeah. so full on, yeah. you have to take a break somewhere. You do, and, and people forget the other side of it. Like, listen, it's a fantastic job. Nobody's going to knock that, whether you're a player or a coach or anything like that. But your your close family do suffer sometimes. The amount of time you spend away, or the hours you spend in the in the office, and then going to watch games in the evenings, or travelling away overnight to games, and it's relentless. It's Saturday, Tuesday. We've touched on it already. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday type of thing. So. Um, when you get the opportunity to give your better half a, a little bit of a break, a couple yeah. of hours here and there, sometimes yeah, it's forced on you. So, well, and, and, and so you should, and Carlos has gone back to his family. Welcome back. Delighted to say uh, Lee Bullen with us for the second half, which lasts longer than the first half. It's about 20, 25 minutes. Carvel Hall, is that, is that OK? Better. You're better, doing still not You're there. better, almost there. Carlos Carvel Hall. Carva Hall. Carvel. I love the combination of sort of Portuguese and Scotch. It's great. I love it. It's a great accent. Yeah, well, I don't know what I am. I'm so <laughs> happy to say Yorkshire. I'm, I'm halfway, but I'm somewhere in the middle. I've been born in Kent and lived most of my life in Yorkshire. I think I'm pushing up towards Nottingham now. I think. <laughs> so some, somewhere around there. James Gregg, uh, Sheffielder, native of Sheffield. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, born and bred. Yeah, born and bred. Drink Henderson's knee, <laughs> and he balances out slightly, slightly. Uh, it's an all owl show. Uh, I won't apologise because last week's was nearly all a Blade show and there'll be some Blade shows coming up. For instance, Nick Cox is coming back. Jamie Hoyland will be here for one of those. People have already booked. So, you know, we, we, that's the party political over. We do balance things out. Uh, James... It's more than just football. There's loads going yeah, on. They certainly about that. do. And Simsy wrote a brilliantly entertaining column in the Sheffield Telegraph this week about what that fixture means. And in his words, how Paul Thompson, the new coach, gets it. He, he bought into the, this kind of feeling. Because Dave Sims here, I said, what is it with you two, Sheffield? And I, he said, it's quite simple, really. We hate each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He meant it, didn't he? He did. He did mean it. Yeah, there was yeah. No, certainly no love lost. But like, well, Rangers and Celtic. That is hate. Yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, but I'm sure there's not the same religious connotations with regards to Sheffield. Oh, absolutely. Which is good. Which absolutely. is a positive thing. <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, that's it. That's there. 7 o'clock, the Sheffield Arena on Saturday. Thoroughly entertaining Saturday night entertainment if you want to go down there. Perhaps from a non-league football game. That would be a nice Saturday mm. of sport, wouldn't it? Uh, basketball. The Sheffield Sharks season is underway. It started with two defeats. Um, but they've not got another league game for three weeks now. But in the meantime, they'll be playing at Manchester Giants in the British Basketball League Cup before they get back into the league action. And we'll finish things off with golf. It's the British Masters at Woburn this week. Two Sheffielders in action. Danny Willett has shot two under par in his opening round. And Matthew Fitzpatrick is the standalone leader after a magnificent round of 64 for seven under par. Let's hope he can break through with his maiden European Tour victory this weekend. That's all, Alan. That's all, is it? That's okay, everything. James, yeah. well, ca carry on with this. And, you know, you, you may have a... Uh, going on. It is for sports to touch on today. We've got football, hockey, basketball and golf all to talk about uh, for the next five minutes or so. We'll start with football. Five star showing for the Blades on Tuesday night in the Johnston Paints Trophy. Beat Notts County 5-1. Good confidence boost ahead of Saturday's fixture when they welcome Rochdale to Bramall Lane. Of course, a week off for Sheffield Wednesday with the international break. Their next game is against Hull a week on Saturday. It's non-league day as well, talking football. We're Hallam second in the league after a 5-1 win last night and uh, they welcome Welcome Hemsworth to Sandygate on Saturday. Sheffield FC, they welcome Loughborough Dynamo. So we're spoiled in this area. Yes. And you wrote all about this in your column, didn't you? I did. And I, I think people should... Uh, let, let's bring Lee on, on on this. And by the yeah. way, uh, Ryan would want us to say that Hallam went a goal down and still won 5-1. And it was his first anniversary as manager at, uh, Absolutely. at Hallam. Yeah, yeah non-league non football day. Uh, there's a there's a lot, lot of good stuff. I, I've I've seen Sheffield and Hallam quite quite recently. There's a lot of good football players. That's fantastic. I just heard um, I think it was the chairman of Hallam on the radio on the way in to meet you guys, and he mentioned that uh, season ticket holders at, at the lane or at Hillsborough 
We'll get in for free up at Hallam on Saturday if they show their season ticket. So it's fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Why not go along, support your local teams? And I think Ryan's done a magnificent job since he's gone in there. It strikes me, you know, and you may not wish to sort of get involved in this, but when I see a game at that level, it's far more competitive and I think meaningful <laughs> than probably academy games yeah. are. Yeah. And that's a problem in the whole of football at the moment. The, the void, not having that tough yeah. reserve team environment. Is that a problem? I think... 100% of football coaches would agree with you in the professional game, bring back, bring back reserve football because I think at under-21 level it's a bit like cotton wool football a little bit. You need to get that kick from that 36-year-old senior pro, <laughs> welcome to football type of thing and maybe going out to places uh, in the non-league would certainly toughen up some of these kids. Mm. OK, well, we might return to that. James, sorry to interrupt. We'll no, go. Good, good we'll subject to talk about. Yeah. And, um, you know, Sandy Gate and at the Coach and Horses ground in Dronfield uh, were spoiled in this area with non-league teams. So please get yourselves down there and support those, as we said, very competitive football indeed. It's the biggest game in English ice hockey on Saturday. The Sheffield Steelers, that of course, the Elite League champions last season, welcome the... Rivals Nottingham Panthers to the the arena you seven o'clock. Okay. Rivals is uh, hated enemies. It's probably more than more yeah. so than Sheffield United versus Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. And, and it actually is. Um, some of the battles that you see in in that fixture over the years, fantastic stuff. Paul Thompson, Dave Sims, friends of yeah. this show, <laughs> talked about that. Um, they love it, don't they?